everyone. I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City is participating in the City Energy Project. Ten cities are combining to try to boost energy efficiency in city buildings. The project is led by the Natural Resources Defense Council and the Institute for Market Transportation. Over the next three years, they will provide expertise to help Kansas City design and implement innovative energy efficiency ideas. The project's goal is to lower annual energy bills and also to reduce carbon emissions generated by an average of 29,000 homes. Other cities participating include Chicago, Los Angeles, Boston, and Houston. For more information, visit cityenergyproject.org. Is there a service you wish the city's Parks and Recreation Department would provide? Do you have any compliments, comments, or constructive criticism to offer them? Now is your chance. Parks and Rec wants your feedback. Visit tinyurl.com slash kcparksurvey to fill out a short evaluation. Residents of Kansas City's 64130 and 64132 zip codes may receive free pet licensing, vaccinations, and spay or neuter surgeries for their unaltered pit bulls and pit bull mixes. This is thanks to a new grant from PetSmart's Charities. These two zip codes were selected because they have an estimated 1,400 unaltered pit bulls and mixes, the most per capita in the city. To participate, eligible residents must visit one of the three participating vets. Those are Spay and Neuter Kansas City, the Raytown Animal Hospital, and the Northland Animal Welfare Society. Learn more by visiting kcmo.gov slash neighborhoods slash PetSmart. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. This winter, we have many activities for your whole family planned at our parks and facilities. For example, check out Breakfast with the Beasts on Saturday, February 8th from 10 a.m. to noon at Lakeside Nature Center in Swope Park. This annual event lets children meet some of the beasts living in their own backyards and learn what they like to eat for breakfast. Kids can enjoy breakfast with their favorite beasts, including skunks, eagles, raccoons, and more, all portrayed by volunteers. Families attending can also enjoy crafts, temporary tattoos, and face painting. Learn more at lakesidenaturecenter.org. Looking to do something different to celebrate Valentine's Day? Participate in an old European tradition that's made its way to Kansas City by locking your love to the Old Red Bridge in Minor Park. Couples attach a padlock bearing their names to a bridge, fence, gate, or similar structure to proclaim their unbreakable and everlasting love. Hey Kansas City, my name is Ryan Avery and this is Chelsea Avery. Hello. We are professional speakers and we're in town because we wanted to come and check out this bridge that we found out on this website that's called kcparks.org. We checked it out. We like to do all the different local things in town. We're and from Portland, Oregon. We are right from now, Portland, so Oregon. Visiting from the West Coast. So we decided to add our lock here. We we told each other we'd be married for 93 years. So in 93 years, which would be like 2100 come and check this lock and we'll still be in love thank you kansas city parks for putting this on we think it's an amazing tradition and we're excited to continue to come back here and see our lock for many years to come visit the old red bridge on red bridge road east of holmes in south kansas city on valentine's day weekend or any time to declare your love the bridge is near the minor park golf course and spans the little blue river you can also visit lock-its.com to purchase a custom engraved lock with a portion of proceeds supporting KC Parks. Learn more by visiting kcparks.org and searching Love Locks. It's time to think spring. All gardeners are invited to come out to the 2014 Garden Symposium on Friday, February 21st from 10 a.m. to noon at the Loose Park Garden Center and on Saturday, February 22nd, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. Participate in gardening lectures, workshops, and speakers to help make your garden its best ever. For more information, visit gardensymposium.org. Want to reserve a Kansas City Park picnic shelter for a small private gathering? Shelter reservations can be made beginning on Monday, March 3rd. Online reservations 
payable by credit card, begin at midnight, and walk-ins start at 7 a.m. Shelters are available for rental from May 1st through October 31st. For more information or questions, please visit our shelter reservation page at kcparks.org. Please note that Loose Park Shelter House and Rose Garden reservations can be made at the Loose Park Garden Center only. To make reservations, visit the Garden Center at 51st Street and Mornell Road or call 816-784-5300. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Where is a cop when you need one is a cliche that we hear about as often as donut jokes. But when it comes to an emergency, it is no joke, and citizens expect to see one of us immediately on the scene. Still, one must always consider the big picture. Even emergencies are divided into categories. Dispatcher Larry Henderson explains. In order to prioritize the calls that come in, we take into account the danger to human life primarily. So we have uh, five different priorities. Priority 10 calls involve an immediate danger to human life. They're sent on immediately upon receipt. Then we have priority 20 calls, which are a possible danger to human life. They're sent on within two minutes of receipt. Then priority 30 calls are calls where for customer service reasons or perhaps evidence at the scene we don't wish to delay them, but we can't send them out in ahead of the ones that have uh, possible or actual danger to people in them. Then we have priority 40 calls which we can hold as long as we need to. And finally priority 50 calls where we warn people that there might be up to a four hour delay. When we've uh, got several calls waiting, we send out the higher priority calls first, which may leave the priority 30 or 40 calls on the screen for a while. For instance, a residential burglary is a priority 30 call. We want to send on it as soon as we can, mostly for customer service reasons. People have been traumatized in their home. But if we have, say, seven officers available for calls and we have three priority 10 or 20 calls, that might use up all seven officers depending on the severity which means while we would like to send out that burglary within five minutes, we will hold it until we have officers available from the emergency calls we're already doing. About 20 or 25 percent of the calls we handle, we call them alternatively handled calls. So if, for instance, somebody has a non-injury accident and the car is drivable and both parties can produce proof of insurance and a driver's license, we'll almost always ask them directly to make a report later at their convenience at the station. Every call we take should end with the dispatcher or call taker telling the citizen or the caller exactly how we're going to handle the call. Nobody should go away from us confused about whether we're coming out to see them or not. It's one of the reasons we take so much time asking questions. If we can get your name and your callback number, almost everyone has a cell phone now. You know, they can call us and we can contact them if we're having trouble finding them. So if somebody is waiting and they feel it's been too long, be, feel free to call 911 again and ask us if we know how much longer it will be. We're here you know, to serve the public and hopefully, unless the stress gets to us too badly, we'll do so politely. Last year, the 911 call center received almost 792,000 calls and we responded to over half a million 911 police calls. Spread over the 1,000 patrol officers split between three shifts, you can understand how difficult it becomes. Please make sure your calls to 911 are emergencies, and if it isn't an immediate danger to human life, please be patient. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe, non-911 week. The proposed 2014 to 15 Kansas City budget has been submitted and it's now available on the city's open data catalog. Visit data.kcmo.org and search for Submitted Activity FY15 Budget. The public is invited to comment on that proposed budget at three upcoming public budget hearings. The hearings will all take place on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to noon. The first is Saturday, February 15th at the KCPD Regional Police Academy Auditorium. 
Then on Saturday, February 22nd at the Robert Mohart Multipurpose Center Auditorium. And finally, on March 1st at the KCPD South Patrol Division Auditorium. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org slash weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.